everybody, not making videos for three months the gap here, and today is a special day as I'd like to... The game so incredibly special to so many of us has its 20th birthday, and as such I decided to play this game once again in the most painful way possible. This is Half-Life Overcharged, mod that adds everything you would like, which in practice means that devs wanted to recreate the spirit of the good old S mod with a couple of incredibly cool visual effects. What could go wrong? That didn't go pretty well. Anyway, I decided that I want to go blind by the age of 30, so we are playing the spanking brand new 2.0 version of the mod, which adds an entire laundry list of changes and hopefully makes the mod a little bit more stable. And my poison for today is pretty straightforward. Well, see this menu? We are going to add some shit every new chapter. Gordon is woken up by Saul from Better Call Saul, who's about to recite the entirety of American Code of Law, but thankfully we are being saved by Gigabrain and his combine police. Ah, I see. This universe apparently Combine came to save cats from human oppression. Fascinating. We get snatched by the second most handsome character in the game after Gordon, and Kleiner apparently forgot to disable his VR chat as he's still an anime girl. After that, we are being thrown into Plaza to meet up with Dr. Kleiner, but oh no, the Combine it has spotted us. But thankfully, we are rescued by Alex, whose voice sounds um, a little bit strange. You see, during the events of Half Life Alex, she got hit in the head and she's now carrying a vocoder that makes her sound like Adrian? After being saved by Shepard, they lead us to Kleiner. And I also decided that our first effect of the playthrough is going to be a little bit of a bloom to make our game look like Oblivion, but you know, without the goblin gang wars. The worst she might do is attempt to couple. One teleporting accident later, we found ourselves outside where we are given a crowbar which makes the most obnoxious sound every time you hit anything with it. With root canals, I've enabled free aiming for added confusion, dynamic RT blending, and some chromatic aberrations. And with that, let's go and crash some cans, eh? The overall modifications to the map aren't really drastic really, just a couple of hound eyes which, yeah, outside of looking way too healthy, there are also some that just fucking explode apparently. Despite that, we proceed forward until we get to water and... ah. This weird issue was only present in the early canals map, and I literally got no idea what caused it. To make this bug even funnier, a little bit later the issue fixed itself, and then unfixed itself. <laughs> Half-Life body just works in mysterious ways. Moving on, we got spotted by the chopper and we are forced on the ground where we get our first gun from the mod, the Beretta 97, and don't worry about it, we will talk about overcharged guns uh, just a little bit later. I would also like to say something about man hacks, but unfortunately for them, I can bring my leg to the argument, which vaporizes everything that isn't a strider, so... One thing that can be spotted really fast is that Combine can read this book, allowing them to jump in a pretty dynamic manner, which makes the fight way more dynamic and unpredictable, even if I feel like they have iframes during the jump animation. We get into the Station 6, which is currently shelled harder than my hopes and dreams of ever fighting a Boatel Toho game on Steam, get jump scared by Gonom, get into the Mudskin, and finally get into the water hazards, where Sunrays, Bloom, Filgrim and Tune effects are enabled. Also there is an issue where the game simply foregores which graphical settings you have on, so if the game looks kinda weird in some areas and doesn't look exactly the same like in the other maps, don't worry about it, it's all within the acceptable boundaries. Water hazard was pretty forgettable since we only drove airboat for god knows how long, albeit at least this time around they nerfed the detachable gun by limiting its ammo, so it's a double I suppose. After being unable to shoot barrels from a distance, there's a discovery that this place is not only occupied by civil protection, but also by women. Oh my god! And here is where I would like to talk about the enemy placement. As you probably know from the previous videos made about the previous versions of the mod, it was pretty ass. And thankfully it was mostly resolved in this version, but pick a very, very, very big giat on that statement. The normal placement is fine, it's just a couple of extra enemies thrown here and there, and the other ones, I, I don't think they do really anything. If you want Overcrack in its full glory though, I would recommend giving the Nightmare preset a shot, as it turns the game into the equivalent of having 20 kidney stones and giving birth at the same time in a scale of painfulness. After getting the airboat gun mounted, we destroyed the helicopter that was pursuing us and ready to the combine base, which was incredibly close to Black Mesa East. Hmm. I wonder if they are going to attack or not. 
There was also a high fan in the cave where Singing Vortigaunt was. Black Mesa E sees the introduction of Bokef Depth of Field, cinematic overlay and CC saturation. And I also changed the enemy preset from normal to hell. But as we already established, those presets do nothing so I changed it to Nightmare instead. In the yapping competition in Black Mesa, we discovered that Mossman, the woman that led us into the base, is fairly jealous of Shepard's position and so she sends 3000 Combine Strike units, Ghost Light, Dante from Devil May Cry series, Navy Seals and your mom through our current location, though the HIV suit is full of tracking devices, so really who knows, maybe it's, it wasn't her fault after all. Raven Home is a chapter which received the most love from over oh, China team, adding two additional areas as well as an alternative path. Let's talk about zombies, since I'm gonna be real, it's one of my favorite things that mod does. One of the things that was kinda off about zombies was that every victim of a headcrab attack had a white shirt, no matter who. And Overchip fixes that by adding a lot of diversity to the skins of the zombies, as well as their moveset. Now, don't worry, zombies aren't going to tiger drop you if you attempt to breathe in their general direction, but there are different animation sets for them. One is very zombine like and the other one has a Half-Life 1 feel to it, and wait a minute, is that? Father Cremator? Holy fuck, I think my dark and greedy nader just started buzzing so hard right now. If only there was some sort of a child labor included in this mod, I think the beta phones would probably explode that whole excitement. We get the shotgun, which fun fact in the previous version of the mod did this, and move on to closing sections of Ravenholm, which I spent on watching hopeless fat zombies trying to get to me and, you know, jumping down to the ghost spot and uh, doing something in the background, I think. I, I think at that time, I think I just went in and touched some grass or something, I don't remember actually. When I came back, I had an idea about the shotgun. Oh Holy my. moly. I gave this mod a lot of shit, but this... <laughs> this is pure perfection. After the rather uneventful stroll through the cemetery, I became a Minecraft YouTuber and embraced a child, went down caving. Thanks to the overclorosis, I can now skip as the depths put a very convenient corridor that gets rid of most of the difficulty out of this map. Thanks, Overchar Grill Team! Now I don't have to kill myself every time I go through that fucking world card section! One cancellation attempt later, we emerged out of the mice and I changed the difficulty to hard because the game wasn't fucking me hard enough. I needed more pain and received it almost right after, because in this situation we are the coffin hydrogen and the combine snipers are the baby bombs. The first skirmish with combine soldiers went as usual, poof they're gone, but over chili dog spices them once again. Remember those lawyer fucks from Trepang 2? Those guys who appeared at the very end of the game. And now, remember how they had shields? Yep, combine also uses them and every type of soldiers can have of them, which makes fighting them, especially elites, incredibly miserable. Going into the rebel outpost, we managed to catch Shepard on a zoom call where they tell us that Dr. Vance has been taken to a gulag over on the other side of the coast. Oh yeah, speaking of... If there's hell, it would probably be overcharged Lost Coast. Not only did they take your weapons away, yes, you have to kiss your hive and an airboat down goodbye, but also brought you down to 10 hell because fuck you, you are not supposed to be here, Dr. Freeman. The objective of Lost Coast is to scale up the mountain that is straight up crawling with combine soldiers in order to disable the cat grab canister launcher, which sure sounds shrimple, but believe me. It isn't. Oh yeah, shout out to looking down, it brings my FPS count down to 20. Here are my PC specs if you are curious. Oh. After getting into the monastery and disabling the launcher, Combine launches counterattack and we are forced to stand our ground, which, as you probably can see from the eye melting amount of bloom that is on the screen, is very hard. To add insult to injury, over chested crew decided to place a sniper <laughs> on one of the balconies, which wouldn't be a problem if I didn't have 20 health, half a dozen soldiers on the opposite roof, and also a fucking chopper just circling around. Oh shit, that's the OACW. <laughs> After going down the chopper and destroying the elevator, we meet with the fisherman again, only to be teleported into the black box and forced to drown, thus making Lost Coast unbeatable. What was supposed to happen was that we are teleported very awkwardly into the second coast map, but for whatever reason the 2.0 version, or at least the one that I played, broke it, so I'm forced to reload the game. 
The Highway 17 experience remains mostly unchanged, barring a couple of enemies placed here and there. Yeah, the bloom kinda sucks, but you can get used to it. What you really can't excuse are the gunships. Basically, they are pretty much game crashes if you have the explosion particle option enabled, as the amount of explosions is so damn high that the source engine just gives up and crashes the game. <laughs> Mind you, this option is enabled in most of the standard presets, so how did they not notice this is beyond me. Also by the time I got to NLO, I didn't know how to get rid of this bug, so, you know, prop climbing. <laughs> the very next section outside of race X being everywhere and Kanbai's trying to apply Smith and Weston to my skull is pretty similar to vanilla. Other than that, there's also an enterable APC, and before you get all excited about the prospect of driving a combined vehicle, the primary file of the vehicle damages you, and the rockets do fuck all damage, so we are sticking to just walking. Oh yeah, the grenade launcher is still here. I have no idea what kind of grenades it uses, but it's pretty good at taking down armored targets nonetheless, so I'll take it. Welcome to the bridge section, the place where old path for the coast was supposed to start. Is the issue this time? Well, the game tries to send me to D2 Lost Coast 00, zero instead of the maps that were supposed to load. Uh, from a quick look around, they seem to be based on maps that were cut from Highway 17 as some concepts, like this bridge over here. In the small hamlet before the big bridge, we are being attacked by skull crusher units of the Combine, and... Alright, let's finally get it over with. The main problem of overcharge is the weapon bloat. At this moment, I carry 3 SMGs, 2 pistols, 2 assault rifles and 2 shotguns. But the problem is that half of those are completely redundant. Like the vanilla SMG, which gets outclassed by the better SMG and OICW if it comes to versatility. And don't get me even started on the shotguns, where you have a choice between the vanilla spas, where you can switch between semi-auto and pump action modes, or the banali M4, which just has the semi-auto mode, which makes it completely inferior to its vanilla counterpart. Some weapons are cool and Concept, like the Vector or G36C because they are supposed to be used in stealth, but well, I don't know, I don't really see a guy running in an enormous orange can as anything but stealth, you know? Don't get me wrong. They are incredibly effective at what they're doing and I wouldn't mind having one AR or something in the game, but Overcharge just gives you too much and eats away at their niches. Reaching the lighthouse, I decided that I'll skip this silly section. Hey, I rolled the dice on it, can't really disagree with it, you know? Also, I've learned that you can just prop climb out of bounds, and you don't have to destroy your legs every time you try to skip this section, so that's cool. You got poor Laszlo! You know, for 3 seconds I actually considered going through the setup section as Volvo has intended, but 3 seconds later I said screw it and just ran through the section. Because why would I even pretend to care? My favorite thing about this chapter is when the Vortigon says to stand aside. If you actually refuse and will stand in the Antlion Guard's corpse, you will soft talk the game! the Omaha Breach was pretty great as I'm no longer blinded by God's Hellfire, whilst also discovering that smoke grenades actually work as intended, which made dashing through emplacements honestly a breeze. Outside of that one part where Overcore slapped a Combine soldier with an N249 saw, because Combine doesn't have any heavy weapons apparently. And if you are wondering, yes, it works exactly the same as an opposing force, it just has a nicer model. Hi Freaks, welcome to Combine's Gulag. This is where the mod decides to play a new game, namely how many enemies can the game engine handle. Seriously, the amount of Combines that you have to put 6 feet under is ridiculous, and combined... <laughs> With the fairly claustrophobic nature of this prison made this an incredibly tough section to go through. Around this time I gained access to the old path of this chapter and it can basically boil down to this. It's fucking raw. You enter an arena filled to the brim with combine units and occasional sins of snipers which you have to charge in order to neutralize. Now do that 5 times, get the very fun but some practical strider gun and you are done with the outside sections. Back in the prison we get up pretty cool sections where you have to open doors for an antlion guard to decimate soldiers and finally get to the game proper, where Combine casually brought a motherfucking tank to a gunfight, which, as you can probably imagine, is fairly problematic as I can't even close the gap and kick him to death. Reaching entanglement, I finally started to not feel so well, Mr. Krabs, as all those settings have started to get incredibly distracting and annoying. Anyway, after the fight with Shepard and the Combine, we reached the tower defense sections, which I of course skipped because I ain't got time for that. With the final section of the prison, the mod doesn't really do anything interesting. It simply throws a couple of mortar things and women alongside the overall Combines and that's it. But hey, at least we know that Mossman is a traitor snake! 
Welcome! Welcome back to City 17. It turns out that the Combine has developed like the slowest teleporter ever, and we have been teleporting for a whole week. And in the meantime, the citizens were like, yo, fuck them Combine bitches and decided to reenact the Warsaw Uprising. Miner and Barney furthermore explained that Eli and Mossman had been teleported into the Citadel, and the latter, Barney, not Mossman tries to break into this structure and... Uh, oh, okay, seriously, a question to you lot. What would rebels do if they had reached the city that would add Freeman? And you know, all those graphical things aside, I, I don't really think like the game is painful enough, so I'm just going to turn the heart off. And you know what? I feel like I have a perfect replacement for it. There you go. After stepping outside, we see that Combine downgraded their field presence from a squad, maybe two, to an entire actual speed convention, but instead of speed, there's Doc who's going ham on them, and to whoever plays this APC here, I hope you get Amok OS installed on your computer. At this point in the game, I'm having so much fun as this guy is, as the Combine had their accuracy boosted, so forgive me, but I'll do a rapid fire round of interesting things that I found throughout the Street Fight chapters. The rebels under the bridge were fucking butchered by god knows what, Tuggle disables the rifle scopes, but only if you use the alt fire button. If you use aim down size button, you can use it normally. This guy, whatever the fuck is going on in this section. Combine barraging this one square harder than Stalingrad and Tokyo combined. AK. It's pretty good. Bathroom with your bros room is still here. Friendly combine. The beta Hydra encounter. I, I have a feeling that I kind of broke it. Super soldiers apparently aren't super smart and can't get out of the line of fire. I got flashbanged by Bloom once I left the canals. Mode allows you to have a Vortigaunt follower. Think of him kind of like a Bethesda companion, but instead of getting in your way 24-7, he charges your suit occasionally. Combine deploying the entire population of Indian subcontinent, but on the very next reload, the set force is gone because of lack of crosshairs. I can't destroy the turrets. Combine guards. Gunships have a deadly laser. Combine guards. You can't destroy striders with an anti material rifle. And finally, there's a Magnuson device in the bunker. Alright. I think that's enough. The rest of the chapter is fairly straightforward if we ignore the basement of this house where Combine decided to station an entire population of my very cool Discord that they can totally join. In fact, the base got me so angry that I decided to turn on HUD again. So, goodbye, Cruelty Squad HUD. You'll be missed. With that out of the way and this game still looking like Satan's asshole, we proceed forward to the horse statue ruin section where you get rid of not only striders but also a gunship, which is here for whatever reason. Compared to the last time I've been here, it was piss easy to be honest. And if you see Dr. Breen, tell him I said fuck you! The little chapters open very strongly since as soon as you leave the pipe, you get beamed by two snipers, which. Uh, yeah, that's something that Combine would do, to be honest. Outside of that, there's also the issue of not being able to see anything, and in platforming sections, this is a little bit of a problem. Worry not, I have an idea. Night vision. Yeah, it's a band-aid solution, since you can't really see through scopes of your rifles, but I'll take seeing something over seeing fuck all. Inside the Citadel, we find yet another surprise, as over cheeseburgers start throwing alien slaves at us, which along with shooting electricity at ya, they also blind you for a brief moment. I'm having so much fun with this. You might be wondering what's gonna happen to all our weaponry after we get disarmed by the no fun allowed field. Well, the section still goes normally, the disarmament sequence just lasts twice as long, and after we are done we can pick up weapons again, so... What's the fucking point of this sequence? Just get rid of it because it doesn't serve any purpose. Anyway, the chapter goes pretty smoothly until you meet the final boss of this game, the elevator ride. The combine goes out in force, throws literally every soldier under the sun, without any cover mind you. The only thing that you can defend yourself with are limited amounts of weaponry. In the vanilla game, this section was acceptable as it didn't have that much transhuman thrown at you from every direction. And to add insult to injury, over Chesterfields decided that adding combine guards to a top of the elevator would be incredibly funny. Yeah, comedy. I'm sending deaths to Detroit for that one. On incredibly satisfying black hole grenade and messing up with the Senny Slater, we get into the Breen's office and listen to him and the whole cast yap about whatever the fuck is important. I, I, I don't really know. I, I was playing Blue Archive in the background while I was watching the scene, so... Uh... Must have been the wind. The destruction of the reactor is pretty plain, to be honest, as it didn't really change any point, although it might be for the better, because... Yeah, no, I'm not doing episodes. 